that's off, Guardians. That's it for this week's discussion. Have any questions or comments about this episode? You can reach out to us on Twitter, at SpinFoilTheory, or write us an email at SpinFoilTheory at gmail.com. If you'd like to read our show notes, check out articles, listen to past episodes, and more, be sure to pay us a visit over at our website, SpinFoilTheory.com. And, and I did the clicky click. Yes. Nice. Oh, nice. No, I'm kidding. Yep. The sun, the the on air sign is lit up in red. Yes, it is <laughs> lit up and very obviously saying, "I'm recording." <laughs> I need to get one. I need fun. to get one for like above above the den. And I'll have like its yeah. own little light switch. That would be funny. Yeah. I think that'd be great. All right, new plans. I'll have to pitch it to Kari. See see what she says, but uh, have it be I'm where very it's. I have, I have an idea. I have an idea. Get one of those. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, the Elgato has like those mini stream decks. Mm -hmm. Have it be somehow where you push the button, it starts recording, and it turns on the on air thing. Boom. Ooh, yeah, I could make a macro for that. A macro, yeah. I'm not sure how yeah. you would hook up the light thingy. I guess you could have it hooked up to your computer. Well, if there I had go. everything in the same spot. Um, my uh, keyboard actually lets me to also macro mouse movements. Oh, look at you! That's like some big brain. But already, yeah, so I could I could just have it like, like start the macro, go straight to desktop, like open the two things. <laughs> that'd be fun. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that'd be pretty. It's cool. the way of the future. All right. Watch well, the first time I do it. It doesn't record it. It, it only records every other word I say. Like yeah, it just yes. like messes up. Like that would be curses. terrible. That's why we have the master recording going as a backup. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. OBS. Okie dokies. Such a good friend. But, uh, all right. Welcome to the Spinfoil Theory, guys. Uh, happy happy to have you back. Um, this is your host, Taylor B., with um, my other host here, Lady Lucita. How are you doing this week? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah. that's. I don't really know what else to say. It's pretty good. <laughs> Um, I've been definitely enjoying the story, our little Ooh, weekly, yeah. our weekly, um, story with, uh, Destiny. Yes. Almost, they're almost like little TV episodes, I feel like. Yeah. I think, like we I get think like I may have said sneak. this on an, yeah, I think I may have said this on an earlier episode and I know, I know some other people have commented on it too, but, uh, like we're the camera. We pretty much are. Yeah. I, I think... At least some, I mean, I know that they've gone from like, you know, the action happening right, you know, in a cutscene versus right in front of us. But I would almost for some stuff that's like important, but mm -hmm. that we don't really have any agency and like, like, it doesn't matter what we do. It's whatever's going to happen to happen. I think it should have been like a cutscene. Yeah. I like, especially that. what happened this week, I felt like we should have ran up to the Savathun crystal and then cutsy would have happened. You know, instead you know of... I was actually, I was actually expecting another one of those uh, animated ones. Yeah. Where he got to, where we like, we see what Crow sees in, that been in cool. the sort that of a cool. vision. Yeah. That would have been kind interesting. I was surprised they didn't have one. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a little worried now because it seems I feel like Savathun is slowly getting all of her cards that she needs to uh, do her plan, you know, Witch Queen, because I'm just because with the wording that Savathun said, she didn't say I showed him who he was. She said I showed him everything. That's the so important I'm part there. Like how much did she show him? Did she show him just what he did as Aldrin the, in Forsaken? She, did she show him yeah. everything? Did she show him everything, everything? Like, how Mara molded him in the distributary and all of that? Like, did she show him everything, everything? And, like, even in, like, the little message we get afterwards where Aldrin... Or Crow, sorry. Well, Crow, Crow, Aldrin, we... He's having an identity crisis. Um, Crow is like, I need to get away from Savathun. And then he says, I need to get away from her. Mm -hmm. Is that referring to Mara? Or is that Definitely. referring to Savathun? Like, 
hundred percent Mara. It's got to be Mara. Yeah. That's where it's I'm like, oh, Mara. poor, poor buddy, poor guy. I just, well, I just worry about him because he's he's getting <laughs> all this like thrown at him, and he's always being compared to Aldrin, and he's like, that's not me. And then he gets Aldrin's memories back, and now is he Aldrin or is he Crow? Is he some amalgamation hybrid of the two? And I'm just curious to see, like. How all this is going to play out. So I I really, really think that be, because of how it's been referenced this season, her sort of uh, influence dominion over the Wish Dragons mm-hmm. or through the Wish Dragons, I think that she could only really show him stuff that he did when he was under Riven's influence. Now, who knows how long that's been, though? That's probably been since I want to say the Battle of Saturn. Yeah. So I don't I don't think she can show him everything. Or okay. at least like when he becomes like really I you know, I, I feel yeah, like I, there I know was what a you point. mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, there was a yeah. point where he was kinda mind controlled almost. Especially in like the ends yeah. of Forsaken when his eyes are all like black and And his skin is extra and- like awokeny. Yeah, like I know he's no, not the I only one that. with that with that thing, but like I always felt like that was the uh, the sort of shimmer of light and darkness, the equilibrium. Yeah, definitely. And his definitely. just seemed like like I don't know if darker, but like more ever present. Like there was a big battle going on. Oh, poor guy. But yeah, I'm yeah. just curious, I guess, to see like how much we don't really know how much Savathun showed Crow and. I'm worried because after that he's just like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm leaving. And then he goes to Venus. Why Venus exactly? No one knows. I, I bet it's because that's where Kyle is. Mm, maybe. Well, he had said, I remember in Season of the Hunt, uh, after we, you know, killed the High Celebrant and everything, we go back and talk to Crow. And he's like, well... Mm-hmm. I'm done. I wanted to go to Venus, but Osiris told me I should go to the tower. Do you wanna do you wanna hear do you wanna hear a spin foil theory? Alright, alright. Venus is still an entrance into the Vex network. What if he goes looking for a reflection of Osiris? Hmm. That could that could that could work. Maybe that. Another thing that I've there. seen I've seen a lot of people worry, and I do too. Um, we know the Mars wasn't the only entrance to the Black Garden. What if there's an entrance to the Black Garden on Venus? That would be that bad. would be interesting. The one, the one part, because it would make, it would make a, uh, for a really interesting, um, like I think you'll dig this, Lucy, and uh, you know, let us if and when you're listening, you'll probably dig this too. I feel like that would <laughs> that would create this uh, sort of like quantum entanglement for the different sections of the Black Garden, because when we defeat the uh, the Dark Heart in D1, the shell breaks and we're back on Mars. Yeah. So if there's a different part, a different like entrance to the Black Garden. I submit that the, how they get away with that is like if you were to say it was whole and you were able to run around the whole thing, you would it would be like crossing over into different planets as you ran yeah. around. Maybe. Well, because like we still have the Garden of Salvation, right? Even though Mars is gone. So I always assumed that the Black Garden was like a separate plane of existence. That's how I always viewed it, but kind of like the... Almost like like a throne world? Very similarly, yeah. Speaking of throne worlds, they're officially calling it, I heard in my dialogue this week, Mara's referring to it as her throne world. And so is Ikora, her little pocket of the Ascendant plane. Yeah, her uh, Ice Luna is what it's called, I think, in the lore. Yeah, Yeah, because basically she created her own throne world through Riven. And I wonder if she's, a ve- I mean, like, she has her throne world, but, like, it's all still technically all messed up. 
still. Like, Shattered Throne is how it still looks because of the ley lines. Now we know that, which I think is really cool yeah. that we have, like, something that had been bothering me since Destiny 1. When they introduced, you know, when the person dies, their ascendant plane collapses, yada yada. When they introduced that in Forsaken, it made me mad because there's a glaring plot hole with that. Why didn't Crota's disappear? I mean, yeah, this his sisters were doing this ritual, but that was just to take his essence and put it in a box. To move his essence elsewhere so they could, like, mourn him and stuff. So, like, that always bothered me. I was like, okay, so why? But now they've kind of explained it. What they probably were stabilizing the ley lines and for the ritual until they could, like, you know, Crota could pass on. And then from there, but with Oryx, they didn't they couldn't stabilize the ley lines and everything collapsed. And I, because... I really like the uh, the nine layer aspect to it as well. Oh, yeah. And, and it reminds me of, it reminds me of like both uh, you know science when you consider like wavelengths and uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. that sort of uh, the the vibrational theory. Um, I'm I'm butchering that by the way. Please, science fans, don't. If you know what I'm talking about, please let me know. But I'm just brain farting, and that's the most I can come up with. But uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but um, I, I really like that, and it also has this sort of hint of uh, mythology to it. You, you Kinda, have you yeah. have things like the nine realms. You have the celestial spheres, uh, yeah. in in other in other mythologies, and I really like. I feel like they're doing a very very cool blending of sort of mysticism and science in oh, yeah. in Bungie the explanation has... of how these uh, ascended planes work. You're saying sorry? Yeah. No, I just I always. Especially with Destiny, they're very Bungie is very good at the whole blending of both science and magic. I mean, Destiny is a space magic science. I feel like there's a a good mixture of both science and magic, which I've always that's one of the things reasons why Destiny is so appealing to me is because we have this you know this sciency sort of stuff where they explain how this is how it works with like. Using real science, and then they also are like, "Oh mm -hmm. yeah, Hive can do space magic." Whatever mm -hmm. they, whatever they, they, if they write the Hive rune for death, things are gonna die. And that's like that's magic. That's that's not how real life works. But because they're able to force their will upon things, they can do stuff like that. But I'm just like, that's mm -hmm. so cool. I just think it's great. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's a. Uh... It, it, like you said it has it's a it's a it's certainly a a different take on like science fiction yes because definitely. it's it, or, or like science fantasy even yeah because i i feel like they put their work in 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 the science part and but then they they also like come out swinging with the fantasy at the same time so it's it's a it's pretty it's pretty cool i uh hats hats off to bungie there oh yeah definitely Oh man. Yeah, I'm I am really digging what they're doing with uh with this season with the Shattered Realms, with you know, all the caches and uh different things that you can find and explore. Oh yeah, the caches, one of have you listened to all of them? Uh right? yes, yes. Okay, I just yes, wanted I to have. make sure cuz the one the first one I got was uh Petra talking about the um you know, they were fighting and then she saw her Corsairs come to back us up, but mm -hmm. it was the, it's the curse, so they're all gonna die again, and again, yeah. and again, and again. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh no, Petra, no, buddy, it's okay. Like, I think, I think this puts think... to rest one of our, uh, one of our theories we had on the, uh, the Trello board that was, mm -hmm. um, what if that, uh, that Corsair with the stomach wound? Mm. Was going to be able to survive. It sounds like no, she won't be able to. Well, because it'll end on the third week, and she'll already be mortally wounded. Well, she gets wounded on the first week, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't say the wound is fade. I mean, I mean, I guess I don't know. She's not. A... We can't just throw a healing nade on her and be like, "All right, you're good." Um, <laughs> but I don't know. It really. It really depends, I guess. I'll check the lore and see if there's, like, any mention of her in, like, idle dialogue. 
or anything like recently. But yeah. I'm I wanna say she lives. I hope she lives. There's a shader named after her. She's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like, she's a cool, cool she's, person. She's, I like her. I think she's great. I hope she lives. But like there is what Petra might have also been referring to is in the second week of the curse, she and a bunch mm-hmm. a group of Corsairs go to try to save the uh laboratory with the Oracle engine and mm-hmm. they fail. And they all die. So that oh, might have no. been what it was referencing, maybe. And then there's also Oofed. after you um rescue uh you go help Emrita and you go get the last of the Awoken Relics. You, or you t- on your way there, you talk to Shuro Chi, one of the Techians, and she has a bunch of dead bodies with her. Of dead Corsairs. So it's like mm. bad things have been happening. But I, I'd, I'd like to believe that Emrita's okay. And she maybe becomes, you know, better. And she doesn't die. And she lives a happy ha- happy life. Not with her wife, because her wife left her. But that's besides the point. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, we, we, maybe it can stay on the board. Maybe it hasn't been fully not disproven yet. yet. Not we yet. Can hold I hope, hope not. I'm crossing my fingers. <laughs> Please don't be dead. <laughs> I always liked doing the first. Oh, I would always do the first week mission just to like get the different dialogue every so every week, every mm-hmm. time it's week one, because like I just think it's great because like it's kind of funny because like her di- one of her dialogue offs she actually flirts with the guardian if you keep doing the mission over nice. and over regardless of your character's gender which I think is hilarious. So I um it's actually where I got the uh, idea for uh. My warlock's backstory is, like, basically she kept doing this curse, and over the course of the, trying to fix the curse, she ends up meeting a corsair. That actually was her significant other Ooh. before she became a guardian, but she doesn't know that, so. Yeah. Oh, man. So, I don't know if I could... It's gotta be there so is, there is a and... lot of tension going on, because she's all like, I'm oblivious. And the Corsairs like, I knew you in the past. And Corsairs aren't supposed, to, they're not supposed to talk about it. It's like, that's very, very taboo. Similarly to House of Allah's like, don't investigate mm. the past, the Guardian. You need to be a Guardian and f- protect the last city. That kind of a thing. That's why Anna Bray gets a lot of flack, because Zavala's like, you could have been using this time that you were investigating your past and helping the last city, and instead you're doing this. I mean... To be fair, it did sort of pay off in the end. Not really, because Rasputin's now an engram. Doing nothing. I I like to think he's, uh, you know, almost shaped like the uh, that Rasputin ghost, but maybe just to all, like, yes. digital bits. Kind of like the, 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 the most twitchiest part of his core when you go yeah. talk to him. And he's just, like, floating around, and his two little mites are still hanging out with their ghost. With Anna's ghost. They're just vibing. He's just kind of like, only speaking Russian. Yeah. <laughs> they only speak English back to him. It's, it's, in, I'm curious to see <laughs> where, or what's going to happen with Rasputin because he's currently in Engram. But yeah. So yeah. Basically with my warlock, there's a lot of tension. She's also kind of pissed off at Mara right now, but because Savathun is literally oh, right there and she's like, you could, yeah. Okay. Well, so here's here's what I wonder if what Mara gets out of and this will be the last little side theory everyone I swear before we move into tonight's show but, um if Mara gets uh uh everything set up she gets all her techians and she's able to remove Sabathun's worm I'm wondering if part of what she gets in return is not only removing you know the last curse but it's having an unbroken throne world and like, hear me out here. She can hide her death now. That would be a worth of the gamble. Or then, in Mars' yeah. perspective. And then, I know Savathun said. I know it's at least in either on the website or somewhere that basically what Mara gets out of it is not only the look Osiris. Allegedly, we don't know at this point. Allegedly. I say allegedly because I mean Savathun <laughs> says, "Oh yeah, I have him. I have him. He's he's um uh, right 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 here. Yep." 
Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, you're 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 definitely saying it correct. I'm oh, sorry. And like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just concerned. I guess that Savathun is lying, but that's literally her only bargaining chip. Well, that and she knows apparently how to defeat the pyramid ships. I mean, she Evidently, did one open. yeah. That or or, or will. will like that's the weird part. It's like, uh, we don't really know if. And how that happened. I'm curious to see how all that plays out. I, yeah. So, I mean, if Mar, if killing, removing the worm from Savathun and doing all of this fixes Mara's throne world and ends the Dreaming City curse, that would be, that's, that's a pretty big, a big bonus on our side, at least. And I could see it being worth it, but. I mean, we know how everything ha- plays out in Witch Queen, so... Or not everything, at least we know that whatever Mara tries to do is unsuccessful, and Savathun escapes, I guess, back to her throne world, and is like, hew, 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 I can use the light now. And, uh... <laughs> we don't really know anything else besides that. We get there, we're all ready to raid, and she's just building, like, uh, you know, orbs of light yes. in the snowman. She's just taking the orbs of light. Just not even messing with anyone. She's like, oh, hi, nice <laughs> of you to finally show up. Uh, we have a party. What's up, guys? I have some cookies right over here. We have a here. party. I'm having a tea party. <laughs> that would be funny. She's, she's all nice, now. and we'd be like, uh... Because that's the thing, because, like, we came here to, to kill, kill you. you. She's like, why would you want to do that? I'm nice now. And we'd be like, uh-huh. Because that's the thing, because, like... <laughs> not even messing with anyone anymore. We know that Savathun gets her memories back. Clearly, as shown by the trailers and stuff. So, I'm just worried what that means for, like, Guardians as a whole. Like, is there a way for us to get our memories back? Should we get our memories back? Like, this is, like, a big... Will that change anything? So, I've been... Like... I have been thinking about this from the hive perspective, and you know, I'm, I'm, I want to pitch it to you here, Lucy. I know I said last one was the last was the last one, but this is tangential off this one, okay. so it's still cool. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the hive exists as you know, kind of arguably three different places, but but everything separate. So you have their their uh, planner existence. You have where they hide their death. So like their death is like it's a, it, its own thing. And then you have their soul. Mm-hmm. So even if you remove the worm and that kills, let's say, two out of three. Let's say that kills her in her throne world, Savathun, and it kills her, her uh, planner body, her soul would still true, be there. True, yeah. And then as soon as her, her vessel gets resurrected by the ghost, like, why wouldn't that just be like, oh, snap. Like, yeah. just, I guess, yeah. I don't know, I'm just very curious to see how this all plays out, and I'm really excited. I hope that in The Witch Queen, we get some nice hive-themed armor, like proper hive armor. Not saying that the thorn armor isn't hive armor, but I'm thinking, like, King's Fall, you know, with the the chitin and kind of like the crota raid where you know you have like the, the the skull on your hip if you're a hunter that kind of thing like i want mm-hmm. that kind of armor back that would be dope i just i just want to have my hunter be an edgy edge lord like i was in d1 with running all super black and all of the <laughs> hive themed armor with the bogoth ga- themed gauntlets and the, the the ghost from the Crota raid, and everything. I just want. I just love the hive. I just think the hive are so cool, man. They're my favorite. As if you couldn't <laughs> tell that at all. Yeah. Nope. I believe. I believe they. Yeah, they are your favorite. I've, I've only heard, a little bit. I've only heard. slightly. <laughs> only a little bit. Alrighty, I do. You have a, you, you 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 but you 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 give the other factions uh, attention too. It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not all one sided. I have just clearly have a favorite, and that is the hive because they're the best. I just think they're mm-hmm. the most interesting. I. I mean, it's mainly because the books of sorrows is a fantastic piece of literature, and um, yeah, that's based. I mean, the books of sorrows really gave us the players a good chance to 
understand the hive instead of just be like, oh no, they're bad. You know why they're bad, why they're doing what they're doing. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, okay. I mean, we have gotten that a little bit with the Cabal and the Elixni. Kind of with the Vex, not really. The Vex are the, still kind of the most... I wouldn't say elusive, but sort of elusive. I mean, we know why what they're doing. We know why they're doing it, but they, I guess, don't really have that much of a personality as, like, the hive. Because, you know, they're all... They have a hive... The, the Vex have a hive mind. They're all just doing one thing, if that makes sense. Versus the the hive, is they have like their hive gods. I can dig that. They show their love for one another by killing each other, which I think is pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. Sorry about that tangent so there. Yeah. Put put. No, guys, put put some mental pens in that. I'm sure we'll be we'll be talking about all those little uh, little tidbits again. Um, but uh, this week, our theory it it's a little different. Um, our show our show this week, I, I guess I should say, is going to be a little different. I, we have kind of some uh, some dueling theories going on, and what got us talking about this was this Games Radar article that we'll link to in the show notes. And it's titled, uh, How Bungie Made Sabathun Destiny 2's Best Villain Yet and Turned Seasons into Gripping TV Shows. Um, and they go through and they talk with some of the devs, and there's there's a lot going on in the article. I won't, um, I won't parse it out too much. Definitely go check it out. But uh, some of the talk in there, i.e. one, um, they seem to confirm that Callus is not dead. So, you know, bonus points to last Yay. week's theory. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give... I gotta give that one that one some official street cred and then um two one of the things that lucy pointed out to me well actually lucy do you do you want to say what what the what you showed me earlier okay, yeah sure um so basically yeah. uh one of the this is about the weapon right um the weapon okay, and that you told okay. me just, just about to make... um you know the the oh, spoiler okay, alert okay, thing. okay yeah, okay yeah i just wanted i just wanted to make good. sure that that's what i had told you because I told that to mm-hmm, other people mm-hmm. too. People were like, "Oh, okay." So basically, um, right when Warmind came, when the Warmind DLC came out, which was the one right before Forsaken, there was a sidearm. It was a sidearm, right? Yeah, it's a sidearm that came out, and it was titled "Spoiler Alert." And the flavor text: "Someone will die." And then, you know, the next expansion came out and Cade, well, uh, kicked the bucket. And now that sidearm has been, you know, unsunset, reissued. And the Bungie devs in this article here said that is purposeful. So, basically, it came out this season. The next big expansion is Witch Queen and someone's going to die. That's basically we're going to talk about and we're going to i just want to uh i just want to like mention right now i had to mute myself but uh everyone listening i'm screaming with you because yes oh it's God. just like okay someone's gonna die okay who <laughs> who could die there's personally i think that like it's a pretty short list i mean maybe maybe not um because like with a lot of characters right now, they're like vendors, and unless they do some hand waviness or change who is that vendor for that particular location, or do kind of what they did when with when Forsaken came out, where Cade was there, and then as soon as you did the the Forsaken, the first mission of Forsaken, Cade's gone. Unless they do something like that, then I think the list of possible um victim i guess if you that's what you want to call it is very short in my opinion okay so you, you heard it guys this this week our our dueling theories are who we think's gonna die queen. who we think's on the chopping block how we think it'll work out how they could pull it off and and all that goes along with that and then i think uh i think we'll do something fun i think what we'll do is we'll score each okay. other's theories Ooh, i like that i like that 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. So who's going first? You or me? Yeah. Um, we can we can flip we can uh, flip a coin. Uh, I don't have any coins. Wait, I do have a coin. Okay. I have a coin, but I, you'll have to trust mm, me. Okay, I trust you. All right. Uh, you can call uh, heads. it. Damn. Tails. Okay, I'll go second. Uh, so I guess yeah, uh, I guess go I go first. All right, I'm listening. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So guys, I submit. Petra is going to oh, die. Oh, not Petra. I like Petra. She deserves better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She does deserve better. But here's why I submit Petra's going to die. There's a few recordings that we've gotten, uh, especially this week, the uh, the caches that you can find in the Shattered Realm. There's some conversations about Petra... Um, what's the word here? About Petra looking uh, through a recording that was at the beginning of The Curse... And it's her lamenting. Uh, she she thinks like she has a, a woken backup coming in, and then she realizes what it is is the curse starting over. And it's all her dead uh, corsairs, you know, going back to life. And she's lamenting that she's going to have to lead them all to their deaths again because they're stuck in this cycle. Yeah. Um. So so there's that. There is, and I forget which one it is off the top of my head. There's some lore. Uh, readable lore um, in in the game, one of the new weapons, I believe, or maybe it's one of the armors, but I think it's one of the new weapons, where Petra is talking about her surprise at the Queen's reaction to her when the Queen returned this season. She was expecting the Queen to be furious. She was expecting the Queen to, uh, you know, attack her about, um, you know, how poorly she did in defending the realm. And to her surprise, Mara actually yeah. praised her. At, uh, for holding out as long as long as she had. Now, I, I don't think that's not genuine. Uh, just just putting that out there. Uh, but my point is, Petra, like like most of the Awoken, especially those in Mars Inner Circle, is molded is molded in some way, like by Mara when she was reformed. It's it's just the truth about yes. the Awoken. One, two. She expected a reaction, in my view, because that's what she's used to getting. If Mara was always nice, if always, like, found the best in in people when they, like, perceive their own failure, she might have expected something different. Putting that out there, because I know, I know also she's been beating she herself has. up she's these three years. She's been beating herself up. Been like, yeah. I, like, even right at the cutscene you get right after you kill Riven. And the curse starts. Well, either they don't know the full extent of the curse yet, they just know that the Dreaming City is now cursed, and they don't know about the loop. She's all just like, I fucked up. It's my fault. And it really wasn't her fault. She was just the one who asked Mara, what do mm-hmm. I do? And then Mara said, go have the Guardians kill Riven. And she's like, okay, makes sense to me. I mean, it probably would have been nice if one of them had mentioned about Ahamkara's being tricky because you know we're guardians we don't really know anything we're dumb we point we, we make just, things go we boom. point and sh- we uh shoot first ask questions uh later like that's pretty much our mo so i'm not saying that petra is to blame for everything i'm just saying it's all mara's fault i can dig it i can dig it so uh you know, and 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 that's and that's a fair point. I'm, I want to call that out now. Like there, there are some internal uh, uh, conflicts within within the character too that can explain you know how strong the reaction. But I I just want to put like a pin in that because like your, your expectations do usually have to do with yeah. experience. I think. Oh, go ahead. Um. Oh, sorry. I uh, I was just gonna. Well, no, no, no. Oh, finish okay. your thought while we're here. I was just gonna say maybe she was expecting that because. Um, she felt, Petra feels like she, even though, you know, we've killed Curia, we've done this, we've pretty much done everything we can possibly do right now, except, you know, somehow killing Savathun, I guess. And even then, we don't know if that's going to end the curse. They would, we might have to go and kill whoever's in control of the Taken right now. We don't know. Basically, what I'm getting at is that the last time Petra royally screwed up, unintended uh was during the re4 and she got demoted mm. hardcore like all the way back to like 
mm-hmm. little Corsair in the tower, and she had to, like, beg Amara to be like, please let me get my... I want to be the Queen's Wrath again. Please, I've learned my lesson. I'm sorry. So maybe that's why she was expecting right. such a angry reaction from Mara, because she felt like she had failed. I mean, yeah, you also did mention that she is very hard on herself, but I just was trying to think of other pastimes where Petra has messed up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I can dig it. I can dig it. Okay. So all that combined with, how can I say this? The sort of uneasiness with this alliance between... um, Mara and Savathun, and surprisingly, Petra's been one of the most vocal people, even in Mara's presence, questioning what she's doing. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty crazy. You got me there. Normally, Mm -hmm. Petra is very much devoted to Mara, and is just like, whatever you say, Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's, she's even threatening those... That I believe Mara has at least given some verbal protection of, if I if I recall certain, uh, you know, in in the uh, the astral uh, activity and and what have you. Uh, she she she's put in a, a knife to to Crow's throat, which is definitely yeah. not not within Mara's order of yeah he shouldn't see Sabathun. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, uh, Petra. I'm- Petra and Mara, I think, are having a little bit of a disagreement out. over what to do with Crow. Because Mara wants Crow to become Aldrin again, and Petra's like, mm, okay. But if he becomes a problem, I'll, uh, you know, deal with it. So she's just kind of worried, I guess. So here's the, uh, here's the hook, though. Mara has started to become noticeably, how can I say this, uh... Having moments where where uh, her emotions oh, yeah. come through, the uh, the veil gets lifted. She's notici- noticeably been sort of uh, stressed. I think for the first time, only every a other time, bit. even even when when the fallen rebelled. Yeah, yeah. She she's she's showing noticeable stress. So to to put this out here, combine that with the lore where it definitely seems like you're getting two versions of what happened with Aldrin and the Awoken from mm-hmm. Mara. Um, through the Augur's quest and then the Augur, uh, Augur's lore itself. Combined with, you have Petra, who not only has been struggling with the, the, uh, dreaming, the dreaming city stuff, also lost the prison of elders. Yeah, that's true. Now put a pin in that and we can, we can pitch in that. We can, we can really dip into the, the, the prison of elders, uh, later because that's, that's a whole other thing. Um, so what I think is that this friction is going to reach um is is going to reach a point sort of like a boiling point where one of them acts out against the okay. other. And I think I think it could be something as simple as Petra questions Mara like at the wrong time in front of the wrong Ooh. people. Or or what have you, or she tries to stop her once she realizes if, if she ever like gets revealed like the full extent of whatever her plan is. Uh, you know, especially you know as we mentioned earlier, throne worlds and and all that. Um, so I think I think there's a lot of time for things to to reach that boiling point this season, especially. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for especially if they continue to do stuff each week, even if it's just like little missions. Uh, even once we get past like the Tekken showing up, like maybe you get to see some aftermath and fallout of the, of whatever happens. Um, I think, I think that's what's gonna do it. I think Petra is liked enough, but not really a pivotal character. I guess she's liked enough, and I, it's yeah, not not as pivotal. Very loved, you know. People people would riot, but I think. I think if things came down between her and Mara, they're keeping Mara around. Very interesting. Okay. 
So that's that's my um and 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 now now like hit me hit me with any questions or any any uh I'm just thinking any uh, thinking. stuff that you have uh let's I'm let's thinking. start there because I'm mean, I'm really interested about your what thoughts. What you said yeah. does make a lot of sense because you know Petra's a good character you know she's under a lot of stress um she is for the first time I think questioning what Mara's doing which is that's pretty. Pivotable, pivotable for her. I mean, she still does whatever Mara says. Like she's like she's still a hundred percent devoted. But I think that unwavering loyalty is—I wouldn't say shaken, because it's not like Mara has done anything to betray Petra or anything. Mm -hmm. Petra's just a little uneasy. She's like, I really hope Mara knows what she's doing and what she's getting into, because this. You can't try and trick the god of trickery. That's that's crazy. And Mara is convinced that whatever cards she's holding is better than whatever Savathun is planning. So that's interesting, and I think so. I could see it happening, I guess. But my big, biggest, I guess, concern is, I feel like your thing kind of. Um, what's the word? Like, can't think of the word. Please hold brain no work. Uh, just microwave noise. Just microwave noise. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, no, basically, sure we're, we're I thought like that. your <laughs> theory basically, um, I would say one of the things, like, for your theory to work, it would have to be that we fix the Dreaming City curse by the end of the season. And hinge, so that's the, I couldn't think of the does, word hinge. Kind of hinge I was like, the, pinned? On, on, um, it pins yeah. on the point? It's, like, oh, held yes. together? Hinges. It, like, relies yeah. on the fact relies that we on, break yeah, yeah, I got you. the curse yeah. this season. And... One of the voice lines this season where Crow asks, like, Hey, Mara, if we uh, get all the Techians back and remove Savathun's worm, does that mean the curse is done? And she said, no, that's a step in the right direction. Is what she said. So, I think Petra, like, once the Dreaming City curse is done, I think it would be kind of poetic if Petra died. Because, you know, she's done all this work and now she's dead and that's really sad. But I don't know if we'll have the curse dealt with by the time of Witch Queen. That's where I'm a little like, hmm. Mm hmm. You know, I feel like... I feel like this is... Like, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like the Dreaming City, outside of some of the uh -huh. destination planets, I guess, is... Some of the oldest content yes, still happening technically but, in the game. Yeah, the oldest places would be the EDZ and Nessus because those were places that during the Red War in the base game. So in the base, anything game, those yeah. planets are on the chopping block, but they haven't said anything about what's going into the content vault, if anything, with Witch Queen. I feel like they would have like talked about that by now, so people could like start. Well, with all with all the. Uh... With all the repair we're doing to the ley lines, I and, and there's just being so much time this season. Like you know, say we say we do the first part, maybe that is a sort of hint yeah, maybe. at what the rest of the season is. There is be about. a law, like the season is very very long, and I guess um, this this week was what part six, I think six, and we only have I think so, it says, like six or seven. Like, we only have until, like, part eight, if you look at the triumphs. So, either we finish the story mm -hmm. and there's a lot of twiddling our thumbs, or we finish the story and then, just like with Season of the Splicer, there's this long time where, like, you know, the ley lines have to come into alignment, you know, some bullshit excuse so that they drip feed the content. And then near the end of the season, you know, we... Do the ritual to remove Savathun's worm, and you know Savathun's like, "Hew, hew, hew!" I leave, and everything falls apart. That's probably what's mm -hmm. going to happen. 
So then that gives, there's this big, this chunk of time where we can do like, you know, the anniversary content still. And oh my God, we have so, I just realized we have so many events this season. We have the dawning, we have festival of the lost and we have the anniversary stuff. That's a lot. Jesus. Ooh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, especially because yeah, some of those are the, like I was just thinking about long. like all of that. That's crazy. But yeah, I think depending on how they go about it, I think maybe, possibly, I mean, I think Petra's on the list of people who could die. But then, because Forsaken isn't Sunset, I guess, I'm just not sure what would happen to the Dreaming City if Petra died, because Petra's kind of holding it together at the seams at this point. She's like... Well, you know... Uh, ab absolutely. And, and you know, I think I think there could be... You know, before big expansions, before the the week prior to it, the, Bungie has done, like, you know, sort of a uh, yeah. preview yeah, of true. the next You're drop right. content. True, true. But yeah, I... I don't... My biggest worry with someone dying is I don't want Witch Queen to become another Forsaken. Forsaken 2. Electric Boogaloo. Because... <laughs> Gotta help like, those hives save that youth center. <laughs> evidently. But, like... I just, I just worry because I don't want the, you know, someone to die really early on, and then oh, we gotta go kill Savathun to avenge, insert whoever died, because like, that's my worry. I just don't want Witch Queen, because so far Witch Queen has been marketed that in a way that we, the main. Th driving point is not we're going to avenge somebody or this and that it's we're gonna go stop savathun because they stole the light that's insane like that's even just thinking about that and everything like i i'm gonna be honest here i did read the pastebin leaks and that and this and that i i followed all of that because i was just i always was just curious i was like i don't know if this is going to be true mm -hmm. or not let's wait and find out that's kind of why, why i was following it not because i hated Bungie or anything. I was just curious. I'm like, hmm, I wonder. And when we first, when I first heard that, the, you know, the hive would steal the light and everything, I was like, that sounds really weird. But if Bungie can pull it off, then okay. I guess that's where we're going. So like, right? I don't know. I just, with that being the main focal point of Witch Queen, I wonder how they're going to also add in someone dying. And then with mm. if it's Petra, then she could also come back as a guardian. Then we would have, you know, Crow 2. And she really would be a hunter, 100%. That was, so, and yeah, that's, that's, a, that's another great, great uh, insight into it, too. You know, we've, we've, we've shown once already, and we know that there are ghosts still looking for their guardian out there. Yeah. Which maybe, then also... Maybe, yo, if she dies, maybe Link is her ghost. Maybe. That would be funny. That'd be pretty cool, but I just I just worry. I guess I just don't want I just don't want Bungie to rehash the same thing they've already done, because they know it's like they're like oh Forsaken was really successful. Let's just do it again. But like I don't know. I just worry. That's all. Because I think doing this this story beats once is fine, but doing it again where you know, let's say Osiris is the one who dies. Oh, we now we need to go kill Savathun to avenge Osiris and help Saint-14. Like, I don't know. You can only tell a Dig good it. story like that once, and then it just becomes predictable. So, that's true. That's, that's my worry, I guess, with whoever dies, whether it's Mara, Petra, Osiris, Ikora, like, whoever it is. I just worry that Bungie's going to be like, Forsaken 2 time, you know? Mm. That's that's mm. just my word, like, overall, about someone dying in Witch Queen. I'm just like, Bungie, Dig please, it. please don't. <laughs> I don't want to do Forsaken again. I mean, don't get me wrong, mm. Forsaken is 
was a fantastic campaign and is and is probably like the best Destiny 2 campaign. I think personally. I mean we haven't had Witch Queen yet, so that might change. But as of right now, I think Forsaken was probably the best campaign wise, because we had, you know K dying. Not 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 that K dying was necessarily a good or bad thing, it just it happened. It's great um, writing either way. Exactly what I'm saying. It was phenomenal writing and the story and like the player like having agency kind of like, you know, we talked for the first time in like forever. Or and the one thing we said was Aldrin Sov is mine and I'm like, okay. And Zavala was like, we- We're not we're not conquerors. We can't just do that and I was like, No, we're gonna bring down the hammer. She says, Do it. Do it, pretty much. So I just I don't know. It really depends on Who's the person who dies and who and how Bungie goes with it, I guess, is really my my take on it, regardless of before I give my little spiel of who I think dies. Okay. Which is kind okay. of crazy. I can, I can dig it. I can dig it. All right. Well, yeah. And, and I and I and I I respect that. I think, um, you know, I think I think for me, a lot of it comes with uh, sort of what I view as expendability. And yeah, how much like she has been featured. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, like her her dying, like, and I'm not saying it wouldn't cause an uproar because people do genuinely love her. Um yeah. uh, as fans out, out there in the Destiny community. So so don't don't get that twisted. But like honestly, like the expendability is is kind of real because the, if you think about it, none of the narrative changes. Yeah. Like That it, is fair. You have yeah. a point. However, I'm going to start (laughs) by saying (laughs) who I think might die. Yes, take us away. Spoiler alert. So, someone will die. And who I think is going to die is not Petra. But I think Mara's gonna die. (laughs) Which I know, before you guys go, what? Mara's, like, super important. So, Bungie... uh, really likes their, um, their, I guess, let me back up. In the lore, Mara is aware that the Ozium court, Oryx, Savathun, and Zivarath is a direct mirror of her own family, of, with Crow, or Aldrin at this point in time, Aldrin being the mirror to Oryx, her being the mirror to Sabathun, and sure, the whoever is in the uh, the Queen's Wrath position at this point in time, it was Shirido, being the mirror to Zephyr Wrath. And then also, on top of that, there is a third, I guess it's a triangle at this point, there's a third, I guess, trinity, where it's Cade mirroring Aldrin and Oryx, because they're hunters, with air quotes, and then you have Ikora, Mara, and Savathun, they're the warlocks. And then you have Zivarath, Zavala, and Shirido. They're basically the titans of the group. So, as we've seen with the now um, Forsaken and whatnot, um, all three of the hunter archetype are dead. You know, Oryx died. Then... Then, uh, Cade died, and then Aldrin died. Not necessarily that that order matters, but that the trinity of people died. With Savathun, we obviously know that Savathun dies to, you know, become a guardian. So, my theory is, I guess, a lot more shorter than Taylor's, I realize, but my theory is that (laughs) then. Because Savathun has to die, either, I mean, I guess Ikora or Mara could be technically who I'm talking about. Could be, but... No, not our patron Vanguard member. Not She's our other Vanguard club. member. No, she can't yeah, go. Yeah, that's exact. Then I was thinking no. about it, and I was like hemming and hawing between Ikora versus Mara, and with Ikora, you know, having a little bit more importance lately... And her getting a new voice actor. Just thinking out of universe-wise, I think Ikora 
he's kind of, I would say, plot protected almost in a way. Where, like, especially, like I said before, like, with vendors dying, it gets kind of in this weird murky territory for Bungie where, like, they have to keep track of if a player has done, you know, Witch Queen or not. And if they haven't, if they have, um, okay, Ikora. Mm -hmm. But it looks like Ikora is going to be our vendor for the Witch Queen area, so to speak. So... If she's dead, who's going to be our vendor? You can't have Eris. Eris is the vendor for the moon. Uh, that really limits our options of who... If Ikora is the one to die. So therefore, since Ikora is basically protected by plot armor, the only person left on the trinity of the warlock archetype who can die is Mara. Now, I know that would be a very, very devastating blow to... Us, because you know. Yeah, everybody loves more. Well, I wouldn't. Uh, well, I I don't mean like us, like the the community. I meant us, like in game, like story wise. Like Ooh, she has yeah. a lot of firepower. She's incredibly cunning and smart. So I mean, it's possible. But then again, another caveat of that is this has already happened before, where Mara died. Air quotes. I say air quotes because she died, but not really. So I'm not sure if it would be a rehash of her dying again, but this time it's for real. If that would really work story-wise. So I'm not mm. sure. Basically, my theory is that the hunter archetype is all dead. And now the beginning of the warlock archetype of Savathun, Ikora, and Mara is going to crumble. I mean, even in the, um, now that I think about it, in the dark future, Ikora did, did die. And, Ikora yeah, Ikora, did. Ikora was Ikora already Ikora died dead. when the bombardment happened, when Eris, Savathun, mm -hmm. the Alexni, the Cabal, they all were like, hmm, let's work together. And they all blew up the tower, which is sad. But, and then, well, the cabal, the yeah. cabal are with Mara. Well, what's left? What's of left them. of them? Sorry, not the cabal. Yeah, they just have no. the yeah, they just have the taken, the taken, the taken cabals. But yeah, and yeah. they, and then also, I'm pretty sure, in, yeah, in, and also in the Chronicron, Ikora dies. So maybe it is Ikora. Maybe I was lying. Maybe I think it's Ikora. I don't know. I think it's either Ikora or Mara. There we go. That's my final thought. I think. I think. I think the way Cora, Cora interacts and uh, moves with the Guardian, like you know, I think she's in making her own Hopefully. fate space. Yeah, like I know, I know Guardians are paracausal, yeah. but it's just interesting. In I guess two. Oh, I oh, meant the main, the main character. character. Oh, <laughs> I meant oh, like the, the Guardian. Guardian. Yes. Like yeah, okay. yeah, like the ones that are close to us. Like like and and guys, I. I know it, but if you really, really think about it, the most we'd ever really done with Cade was like a couple of missions during the Red War, and then that one. We were we were just kind of buddies on comms. He was our homie. Uh, it be yeah, because he couldn't because he couldn't uh, like he loved running. He loved uh, being comms on missions with us, so we had like a work yeah. relationship. But uh, yeah, yeah, we've done. I feel like we've done in interacted with so much more like Ikora and Zavala. I feel like they're actually like they've made it inside, and and as we've gotten more powerful, our bubble yeah, has Yeah, no, I definitely, I can <laughs> like this, see that. The fictitious like see that, blood armor I'm bubble. Just uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like maybe that I'm thinking it's either Ikora or Mara. Basically, is what I'm saying because I'm leaning a little bit more towards Mara because maybe I mean with the with Ikora, it'd be a little trickier, I guess. Well, with with um with any character on the chopping block, do you think there's like especially if they're vendors of some sort? Do you think they're? I mean, Ikora is the toughest one I can think to do this with. I'll put this out there. But especially if uh, the story permits that the uh, the curse of the Dreaming City finally ends, uh, or is going to end maybe in Witch Queen, and it's just like the setup for it. But uh, things still start to uh, start to change. Um, you know, it uh, 
it sort of lends itself to like, you know, okay, the landscape's changing. So then like, you know, obviously like I, I leaned into Petra at that point, but like, you know, if you still need a vendor for there, like, well, we've been working with Mara. We've even interacted with yeah. her directly this season for really first the first time, yeah. the first time as like a, a stationary person you can kind of go talk to. Um, so I think, I think they might be getting used to you having like a direct relation, relationship with the queen as opposed to uh, sort of through her court. Is how I feel like you really interacted yeah, with her before. No, no definitely. Um, so I it, that that's just coming from my theory. I think I think for yours though, you know, I I think there's a, a great point that uh, that you know, if if it is Ikora or Mara, I I feel like you know it's it's definitely a situation where one is going to fill Pretty in the much, role of the other. Yeah. I don't think they're going to introduce yeah, a new it character. Seems a little, yeah, we're a little late in the game for us to introduce another character so pivotal. In the Witch Queen expansion, especially. But, My name is yeah. Shahan. Shahan, I'm going to be guess. the vendor for uh, <laughs> Mara Sov's Throne World. No, no, leave him to the castle, Joe. No, it's not Sean, it's Shahan. Whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's how, that's how little I remember him. I didn't pronounce his name wrong. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You said it right. I'm just, I'm just, that's just something I feel like uh, he has to say a lot. Whoops. Is your name Sean? Sean? Yes. No, his it's Shahan. Sean. No. It's a completely different name. That's his name, and no one can tell me otherwise. <laughs> but yeah, no, I definitely agree. I mean, they could also, with if Petra is the one to die, they could introduce Shirido. Come back. She's not dead. She's just lost in the Ascendant Plane somewhere. Or somewhere. Not necessarily the Ascendant Plane, but she's lost somewhere. So I think... Hmm. Maybe, maybe Petra dies, and Shirida replaces her. Maybe Mara dies, and Shirida replaces her. We don't know, but that's basically my theory. Okay. Okay. You know, I got a, I got a bonus one. A bonus uh, one. Okay. Yeah, here for everyone. Um, that I was uh, it's the one I messaged you earlier about. Ah, that one. Okay, guys, okay. what it. What if it's Varix? <gasps> Not Varix. So, so, so one of the comments they make in the article is "spoiler alert" was brought back for a reason, and so the Queen Marasov is now in charge of the Reef. At the end of this season, she is now back. Uh, it, you know, presumably with a fixed realm and possibly throne world. Um, and she she has her Techians back, like she is like Ur. she's flexing again. Okay. Who under her command, who under her command quite recently betrayed her and his post, got a lot of her people killed. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Let loose, let loose the scorn all over the system, defected to help the House of Salvation, at least initially. And is hanging out on Europa like nothing happened. I have a... Why, that would be Varix. Yes. <laughs> that would be Varix. <laughs> Varix is just, I'm hiding here. No one's going to find me, right? Varix the disloyal. Yeah. I he mean, defected he's from to Mara to go people. to Aramis. I mean... I feel that's like that's one of those... But, uh, I don't know, man. I have a counter, a counterpoint. Okay. But similar-esque. Um, it was the spider's job to make sure no one else got into the Dreaming City. That was his job. He was kind of, he was allowed to, like, have the Tangled Shore on the off chance that he makes, like, nobody gets into the Watchtower. It was kind of his job. And not only did he let Aldrin mess everything up in the Dreaming City, when Aldrin was revived as Crow, he strapped a bomb to Crow's ghost and was like, hey, if you misbehave, I'm going to just push the button and bye-bye. So, like... I, I really feel like he could have phased out of that if he wanted to. He could have. But I know there's lore right now where... um. Spider is talking to Drifter, and he's like, "Hey, you can you can get me out of here, right? I'm Mara's yeah. not too happy with me I right read now." That comic. So like, I think it's a good comic. 
So I think, besides like the people we talked about earlier, I think maybe Spider, because Mara mm-hmm. is a very possessive person, as we've seen. Don't touch my stuff. And uh, Spider definitely uh, messed with her stuff. Oh yeah. So I think I she feel might. Like, you know, Spider. Uh, you know, Spider's in a weird place. I think. Yeah. I think the fact that he is connected to another character like Drifter, who can definitely do some smuggling. Yeah, that's where I'm like, he could get out in time. He could not. He something. I don't know. It's tricky. But I think now that I think about it, um. Spider's definitely like, I'm gonna <laughs> run away now. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> oh, I it's think very he's coming, interesting. I think he's coming to the Elixney Quarter. No, I, I think if the not. Tangled Shore's he's... going away, I think he's coming to the... I, well, I mean, they have that whole underground area. I mean, yeah, they do. But at the same time, I'm like, Spider, you're... You're a mob boss. You're not here with good intentions. He's the like, I see through. I see through your lies, man. I know what you're trying to do, Spider. I've... I've said it before. He is the kingpin if the radioactive spider bit the kingpin instead of Peter Parker. You know what? It's like giant man spider mob boss. Man spider mob boss. You know, that would be terrifying. <laughs> Just wait till he brings in like Rhino and Shocker. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. His entourage. <laughs> I'll be very jazzed about it. But uh, okay. Yeah, you know, I think I think the um I think the spider is a good candidate. Uh what I feel like the spider does is actually a little more successful than what um than what I think Callus was sort of also doing. It's like this third faction. It's like he's working with you, but is he really on his side on your side? Or are they really kind of like their own like thing but what i kind of like about it is it reminds me of stories of uh like in history when um the mafia protects the docks in new york city during world war ii make sure like all the union workers do the work and get get the ships like moving like as fast as possible to like actually help with the war effort like silly silly little stories like that yeah Um, definitely. it just makes me think like it's it's really cool to keep the spider around because he kind of has like this extra element of uh and he could become an adversary like beyond light and dark but I think while we're still in that, like it's like you need you need someone like that. Yeah, um, no, for, definitely for story purposes, for sure. And and to your point about vendors, I think you know this this actually would supplant my uh, previous theory. So if if uh, Varix goes down, I would say you know especially if Mara does become a vendor, I would say you know obviously Mara would be in the Dreaming City and and. If, you know, Mara is responsible one way or another for killing Varix, maybe Petra's on Europa now. Well, maybe. Like I said, it's really... If it's one of the vendors that dies, it's kind of hard to find someone to replace them that, like, makes sense, I guess. Because you already have the Exo Stranger doing stuff on Europa. So, like... Oh, yeah, maybe, she could maybe she could, she could a larger role, too. I mean, she's not going to really be doing anything for the next, what, how many seasons? Because Stasis isn't getting any updates. So she could just fill that role. Well, yeah. While the light subclasses get their rework. It's really funny. Earlier, I don't know if it was before the show or earlier in the show, um, but uh, we were talking about um, what's going on with Rasputin. Yes. And, you know, they're, they're in the Exo Factory. Maybe if even if it's just a fragment of Rasputin, not at his full capacity, maybe they make another Rasputin Exo. Maybe, maybe. And then he puts on his son's helmet. God, that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that would be. Well, just just because they're poking around there, like that's that's the last place you see them. It's just kind of like, well, dear. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what else would they be doing than messing with golden age technology now that they have a giant clovis bray eye maybe maybe i don't know 
We'll just have to uh, wait and see, I guess. Uh, ooh, or what if what if they what if they put Rasputin in that and they kill the Clovis Bray Eye and just make him oh the giant? Oh god, talking that head? sounds like nightmare fuel. Give Rasputin giant head and it just screams <laughs> at us in angry backwards rushing. He's... <laughs> I mean it would be pretty funny. But <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, that's that's fair. We can we can. Uh, I tell you what, after we do our uh, our mutual scores, we can um we can both score the, score the Varix one since that's like a little bonus that we were talking about earlier. Um, okay. Um, who wants to go first Ooh, for scoring? Um, I guess I'll go first since you talked first. Um. Okay. Hmm. I have to think of some arbitrary number. Some arbitrary score. Makes <laughs> sense. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with 35 uh, Ahamkara bones. Ooh. Yes. Um, I think the theory is good. It makes sense. But... I just worry with Petra dying, how that would work. Your, like I said earlier, your theory hinges on the fact that the Dreaming City curse is wrapped up before this season. And I want, and, and if it's not, then someone else probably is going to die. That's all. That's it. That's mm. my only concern with it but otherwise it makes a lot of sense all right your turn i can dig it I can dig it i appreciate the ahamkara bones it's uh Ooh. after uh after playing you know trials for like the first really times ever this season and then moving into uh iron banner this week me and my young ahamkara spines have been doing work <laughs> Ugh. So much, much welcomed. Okay, I'm gonna give you. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna give you because we were talking about Halo earlier. Three, four, three. I'm gonna give you three, four, three. Uh, Hive Risen. Hive Risen. Okay, that's a lot. Because I think I think well. I mean, okay, but like. You know, the, it, it 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 might. We haven't fought them yet, so you might like cut through that many like day one, and then you'd be like, "Well, now I'm worried about the score." <laughs> but yeah, no, it is a lot. But uh, three, four, three, because we were talking about Halo earlier. Um, and and it's actually four. I think it's a really good theory because Mara's death and creating that sort of vacuum uh, with a lot of our heavy hitters. And especially the, the the Dreaming City and what that would mean for Crow interacting with it now. Especially if maybe, like, what if he avenges her? Mm. Inadvertently or not. Um, so I, I, I think it's a, it's a good catalyst to throw things into the final act. Because if Mara goes out, it's out with a big bang that really yeah. changes something. Like, maybe that's how that pyramid maybe. shit gets cracked I mean, open. Mara did, or Shirido did have a vision that Mara would crack a pyramid open. So maybe, See? we don't know. So yeah, I think, um, I think that's, uh, yeah, I, I think, <laughs> whether it happens or not, I, I think it's still like a really, really solid solid theory um uh, i guess like only only reservations i would have about it would be i guess one uh you know the impact of the plot and the fact that we know like the next few plots wouldn't focus around that and that's if you did something like kill off that major of a player you would i i don't know what they could do to really explain how that's and not zone expansion yeah. what you're focusing on or how that's not in like yeah you know what i mean and like in disarray so that's but that's from an out of game uh sort of perspective and then my my other 
similarly, like that's with Mara, similarly with yeah. Ikora. Um, even if that does lead directly into the next conflict, it's it's just like how do you unless it's like, yeah, another Forsaken clone, like to Electric Boogaloo, it's all about us getting revenge for Ikora now. Like he's just kinda like eh. <laughs> Okay, so we did this before, but now it's it's like it would actually be like Taken Two, which is essentially the first movie, except now there's two of them who have been taken. Yeah. No, I can see that. <laughs> So, so I think uh, I think those are those are would be my only apprehensions to those. Um, I feel like, yeah, I I hundred percent agree that someone is going to die. Yeah, but the question uh, of who, based on the little subtle hints and the fact that yeah. they talked about it, yeah. So it, it yeah, uh, but I'm I can't wait to see, in any event. So like yeah, I think I think that's an awesome theory, man. Very, very well thought out. All right. Oh. Okay. Um, I'll throw in. I'll throw in my my quick theory for the bonus of Varix. Um, like you said, I think it was pretty unpopular before what they did with uh, you know, people who were when they still had Red War, but after Forsaken yeah. had come out. Uh, where people would basically like go through the Red War stuff and then oh god, Kate's not in the tower yeah. anymore. <laughs> like, um so uh and and that was I, if i recall correctly that wasn't like the best received or it created just a lot of confusion and questions um so i i i would i would say i would say they probably would like lean against that you know like yeah they have crow in two places right now but i mean you're not really going back to do stuff with uh crow and spider's yeah. den anymore like it's not i don't i feel like as you as you progress through stuff in order you would naturally just move on uh so you know i uh i, I agree i i agree with all that um reservation to it so i give i give um Varix being the one i'm gonna give it uh 23 23 uh what's what's the thing called the shard of darkness i give him 23, 23 shards of darkness, shards of darkness. Like maybe all right yeah, it would be a pretty dark timeline if they were just like, yeah, and he's dead too now. Jesus. Play through Europa and then, oh shit, Ferex is gone. <laughs> Especially since all, I think all, all of the, the missions where like you need him talking to you still have like little flags where you can do him, replay him anyway, so. We just take him out all together. I guess that's fair. Yeah. I mean, if it's if it's Spider, I'm thinking maybe it's Spider. I mean, he he kind of has it coming. He's done some pretty bad things, and now he's yeah. trying to like weasel his way out and be like, "I'm I'm I'm out of here. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to get out before things get too bad." He's kind of cartoonishly evil. Kinda though. like it's not. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Strapping a bomb to someone's ghost and threatening to blow it up is pretty. That's pretty pretty crazy. I think. I mean, yeah, I just imagine, like, the tiniest, like, actual little, like, old-timey thing of dynamite with a clock on it. Yes, basically. Just inside the shell. Or, I just I just feel <laughs> bad. Just, like, I, like, the spider's ruthless enough to he would have done it. Like, he doesn't care. I... I think if he... You know what? I, I, I gotta be honest... I think if he was going to play that card or if Bungie was going to play that card with him, he would have kept the ghost. He would have said, okay, the deal's for Crow. I'm keeping Glint. He's mine. Huh? I could see that working out, maybe. But we'll have to see, I guess. I don't know. It seems that Spider wants out. Okay. And, well. That's true. He knows Mara's okay, hunting so for him and it's pretty pissed. So it kind of makes sense, I guess. Mm-hmm. She's also very distracted, though. Kind of. Perfect time to escape. Exactly. Also, perfect time to escape. But. So, what do you think? You can you can score either one. You can score um, you can score uh, spider or or Varix or some combination thereof. Uh, spider, I give uh, seventy three uh, scorn, and uh, mm -hmm. Varix, I give. 
34 um, Etheric Spiral. I just picked a random I can dig it. thing of a thing. <laughs> Etheric Spiral. Yes. I can dig it. Um, Because with Varix, again, Groovy. I mean, yeah, he does kind of deserve it. He's done some really bad things, but he's at least trying to be better, while Spider, on the other hand, is just a mob boss and rationing ether from everybody and being kind of a bad dude. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, people can change, but you have to wonder at Spider's motives for wanting to leave the shore and maybe go to the last city where House Light is. Like, you gotta question his motives. He's not exactly a nice person. Not saying that the rest of the Elixni that are there aren't haven't done bad things, but you have to look at their intentions mm -hmm. is what I'm worried more worried about. I can dig it. I can dig it. Very solid. Mm hmm Very solid. All right. Oh man. Um well, uh yeah, let's uh let's let's move into shout outs. Do you got uh do you have any shout outs this week, Lucy? Uh, um Shout outs. Uh, I can go first if you want. Yeah, you you go first. You go first. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm actually, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Bungie and um, an artist, uh, Mal E at Relay314 on Twitter. Bungie used some of Mal E's art and accidentally didn't give, him, give them credit for it. And it was, you know, a, a lot of people started pointing it out on Twitter and... Uh, and it, it it was something that could have easily gotten away from from both the artist and Bungie. And just I want to give a shout out to both of them for just how class acts they both were. Uh, Mal E before Bungie had a chance to respond because it happened like on Friday. So there was a whole like weekend where people were, you know, disconnected from work on Bungie's end. Uh, Mal E was was tweeting like, hey, like, I'm sure this is just a mistake or a slight oversight. Like, yeah, guys, Bungie, uh, you Definitely. know, did like th this is not what we should expect of them just like they've never done it before i'm sure this is just just a and and i'm really like honored that they put my heart and they're like, like this this at the other and then like first thing i think it was like monday or very early in the week it was a uh, cosmo you know confirmed this like hey you know really sorry our bad owned it yeah said it was a mistake and then i think i think it, they have the credit applied now so like just class act on both ends uh especially with social media like it's so easy for things to get away definitely when uh when people start uh jumping to conclusions and both ends of this kept that from happening and it's actually like a, a really cool story now so yeah hats off to both of them yeah well that's super cool super cool yeah. um now it's my turn for a shout out oh boy um shout out to uh uh, I guess my boss for being super chill, because I'm moving soon-ish, and uh, he's uh, being really chill about all that, and, like giving me time to like get settled and everything, nice. which is really nice. But on a completely unrelated, I mean, sort of sciency note, um, the work for my publication is going to be used as like a standard for uh, climate models, which is pretty crazy. Nice. Like, That's really cool. That kind of hurts my brain, because I'm like, what I did doesn't feel like it's that important, but apparently to everybody else in the scientific community, they think uh, my work is really cool. So I'm like, oh, okay. Makes sense, I guess. Very cool. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's That's super cool. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Proud of my co-host right now. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's awesome. That, that makes me super happy. I'm glad. I'm glad it's going well. And uh, you know, spoiler alert: when you uh, when you finish moving, you know, send. Let me know where it is because I might have like a little a little healthwarming gift for you. Heck yeah. For new place. Might might have a little something. Might have a little something. <laughs> some. But I wanna I wanna send it to there because that's yeah. you know. Okay. Well, 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 some. Well, Sounds well, good. <laughs> I can dig it. Um, so yeah. Well, uh, 
Great, great show, Lucy. Um, with that, everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, you know, stay safe out there. World's yeah. world is still a crazy place. Um, stay safe. Wear a mask. Drink water. Um, and bundle up. It's starting to get cold in uh in in certain hemispheres. <laughs> I, know, I know for some of our listeners, I guess it's starting to get warm. But uh, dress temperately, no matter what yes. your weather is shifting toward. <laughs> so, please. <laughs> but with that, everyone, we will see you next time. Bye bye. Doodles, that's off, Guardians. That's it for this week's discussion. Have any questions or comments about this episode? You can reach out to us on Twitter at Spinfoil Theory or write us an email at spinfoiltheory at gmail.com. If you'd like to read our show notes, check out articles, listen to past episodes, and more, be sure to pay us a visit over at our website, spinfoiltheory.com. The Lord Network. Mm-hmm.